Ew. Guess who's doing laundry tonight? Me. Lynn, fire, pool, Gwen, Gil, go, girl, ooh, queer, drop, ooh, alungus, elo, elio. Oh, go, go, shh. The Church of Mary in the hollow of the White Hazel near the fierce whirlpool and the Church of Silo by the Red Cave. We are in the town with the second longest name. Yep, you heard that right. 58 letters, 16 syllables. So apart from the very long sign, we're gonna go explore to see what else this town has because the sun is out and I really hope you hear all the birds. And it has to be awesome because if the birds are happy, I'm happy. Okay, so look all of the ways. I'm going to this spot and my phone doesn't have signal. So I was just walking by this thing and check this out guys. Such a cool building. I have no idea what it used to be. I think it used to be like a church, maybe? But check it out. I'm not sure if anybody lives here right now. So I'm not gonna go up and stare in the window, just in case they do, because I think it'd be weird to have a random person with a camera come put it against your window to see what's inside. But it's so cool. Now, one thing I wanna tell you about Wells, the more West, you get in Wells. Yeah, to remember my directions. The more west you go in Wells, the more Welsh, well, show you my armpit, the more Welsh is spoken. And I find it so cool that a bunch of the signs and everything where we walk, they're all in Welsh. And the thing that's really cool about Welsh is like, it's one of literally the oldest surviving languages in the world. So it dates back to Roman days, actually when the Romans used to live here. So a lot of the words that we have in Welsh are very similar to what like ancient Rome, you know, from 400 AD, zero AD, those guys spoke. So let's go walk a little bit more. This is the nice little street we're going down. Nice little cute houses with little walls. I can't wait to tell you more about Wales. Well, Wales. Okay, you guys, so I'm walking to a thing. Like, I'm just exploring the town and seeing what's here. And look what I ran across. I ran across the Women's Institute. So the reason on why this is so cool and important in Landfair is that it came over from Canada, and it was one of the first women's movements that started for women. See, here we go. I can show you the sign here. So this was like, you know, to help women get equal rights and equal voting rights and all of that sort of stuff. So I think it's super cool that like the whole, I don't like calling it suffrage because that's weird, the whole equality movement of, um, of the UK, you know, it started from Canada and it started here, like right in this little building in the early 1900s. That's so cool. So we're walking down this field next to all of these cute little baby sheep and their parents. And we'll see where this takes us because I think it could be pretty cool. You guys, it's baby sheep season. Hi, babies. Hi. How are you? You're very cute. Oh yeah, you do that. I'm glad you're potty trained already. Hey, how's it going? You're so cute. Yeah, hi. I wish I could touch you. You're that cute. Is that your mommy? She's pretty too. Yeah, play, play. These guys are so small. Baby sheep. Thank you. So we're gonna take a little journey off the highway that I was walking on and go the back way in this forest to the next destination. You guys, so I just like went around the corner 
and I saw this field of daffodils, which daffodil is the national flower of Wales, so now you know. And then I saw all these cool trees. Like, I thought this stuff existed in the Ice Age or in Australia, but it's here. And then around this corner, you have to see this. It's raining pretty hard, so I hope the camera doesn't die. Squishy, squishy muddy floor. I don't know what this is, so if you know what these are, drop a comment. But look at this. What is this adventure I'm on? Landfair is the best town I've been to in all of the UK so far, I think. This is so cool. What is it? On the side of the road, on this like cute little path here, doo -doo. and look at this. There's little snacks on the side. Now across the road, this is where I was before. I think I was in where I wasn't supposed to be in. You see, I think I was in some private property or something. Let's see? So I was walking along this field with all these baby sheep. And I was like, oh, baby sheep. Oh, wow, this is muddy. Okay, so it's raining really a lot, which is why I'm not videoing so much. But this is the little nice path I'm walking in. Check out this beautiful field. It's just like green and rain and peace and serenity. You guys should really come to Wells. You guys, check out my feet. Oh, my pants. Look at it. I got muddy. Do you see this massive rainbow? Rainbow. Rainbow. It's also really bright because it's sunny. So we are going to learn. Oh, let's unmuffle me. OK, there we go. Put me up here. So we are going to learn now a little bit more about the Roman invasion of the UK. So long ago, like around 100 AD, maybe a little bit before, ish, 180 ish. The Romans were like, yo, we're gonna go up north and invade. So basically they came to the UK and they, or it wasn't the UK at the time, it was, I don't know, but they called it something. And they invaded. And as they moved up north, they kept like conquering different towns and building forts and everything. And then when they reached Scotland, the people living in Scotland at the time called the Picts, the Romans could not defeat it. So what happened, I have to check to make sure I'm not gonna get hit by a car. What happened is they built this massive wall to keep the picks out. Now I'm pretty sure like the picks had no desire in trying to go and fight the Romans who had like iron and metal and all sorts of crazy weapons. So that wall is called Hadrian's Wall, which we'll try to go see at some point in our adventures together. Check out how beautiful this is though. So whenever the Romans came into this area, there was this little island off the west coast of Wales that they came and captured. And in this island, they built a tiny, tiny, tiny little fort. And that little fort stayed there until about 400 AD when a British, well, it wasn't British at the time, but whatever, when a British queen started to rally the troops together and evacuate everybody. So everyone basically evacuated the city of Lanfair to go fight the queen. Is that my, nope, not my drop. To go fight the queen. And it turned out that, you know, the Romans lost. And then they went back down south to help protect the land and retain the land they still could have. So that's why land fair is cool. And that's why we see so much Roman stuff up here. Now in a bit, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what happened to Wales after the Romans left. Now, if you're a plantologist, there's this little white flower that exists and it's all here that grows wild. Check it out. I don't know what it's called, but it's just all in the wild here. If you know what this white flower is, let me know. We're gonna call it Wales Dots, Well Dots. Okay, there's this massive manor up here, which I hope is my, my trail. You see on Google, it says I'm walking in the middle of a field, but then the Wells Trail system says I'm on the right path. And my hiking system says I'm on the right path, which is why, oh man, think of the things that tree must have seen, you guys. If it weren't a river leading up to it, we would go listen to the tree. We'll find another tree to listen to. 
So we're gonna go see what's beyond this fence. There be dragons. Okay, so I'm taking a break. Check out my trail. This is now the new trail, and I know it's the trail because it's next to this electrical fence. And yes, I tested it, so we're not gonna test it on camera. But it says I need to go this way now. So let's go this way and check out that. That's what I'm gonna walk in, you guys. Um, I'm always up for adventure. I had no idea I was gonna get this much adventure today. This is crazy. But what's even more pretty is like what's in front of us. Check this out. So we have the whole mountain range of Snowdonia mountain range up here. And it's just beautiful. Like you can see the clouds breaking. Snowdon's still very covered. Like you can't see Snowdon right now, but you see the snow and stuff and the little baby sheeps. You can see a little, this sheep is very brand new here. He's staring at us. Hi, little brand new sheep. Okay, we're gonna go and attack this mud. Um, here's an update on my shoes. Yeah, they're pretty. Um, tell me you have a washing machine without telling me you have a washing machine. That. Yay. I love hiking. I mean, this is like nature's balance beam. Oh yeah, if you need a uh, book recommendation, we're still listening to Carl Jung's Libra Novus. So super, super great surrounding to go within and read philosophy. I've acquired a friend. So my entire everything is all muddy. Um, this is like the best hike I've ever had, you guys. So the fields are all muddy. And I didn't come prepared for that. Like I came prepared for a little bit of wetness, but not this much mud. So I've acquired this stick because I was having to navigate the very electrical fences and that got a little bit zappy. So stick moves them for me. And then I had to like crawl under some of them because like on some sides they're electrocuted and other sides are not electrocuted. Now, like I don't care how I look. The funny part though is gonna be when I go back on the train and uh, get to my next destination, looking like I'm a sheep. I mean, I kind of am a sheep. Okay. This part of the field though is actually really nice. Like it's not too muddy. Um, there's a lot of grass to walk on. And check this out. So we're gonna go to where the sign says monument because this is how committed I am to seeing old shit. I will go through muddy fields and live my lifelong dream of being an archaeologist. So I'm gonna get there. So we took a little turn off of the muddy sheep path and check this out you guys, like all of a sudden there's this beautiful little gravel trail, which I've gotta tell you my socks are loving it. So the English version of Wells is obviously Wells. Now the Welsh version is called Camru, and Camru is an old Roman slang term for countrymen. So now you know. So check this out. Now by the same people, in the same time, around 5,000 BC, they built Stonehenge, they also built this. Now this is an old religious ceremonial place. And we don't know a lot about it, but what we do know is that once a year, on the summer solstice, a beam of light will enter that from the sky and it'll go directly through. So let's go see inside and see what there is. to the 
the front. Now, just how cool this must have been. Over time, soil sinks and everything sinks and there's erosion from the wind, which you can tell it's windy. Um, this must have been a massive mound. Now, what we know about the Neolithic people from then is that we're pretty sure they were farmers. I mean, right now we're in farmland and it's really fertile. Like there's a bunch of rivers, which is why I'm all muddy. Um, but yeah, let's go explore the inside. see like sometimes people will bring in here candles and all sorts of other stuff for good luck let's look at all these good luck symbols so we have some some chips some shells some monies all sorts of things to do whatever you want to do with religion here So it's raining outside, so I think I'm just going to give you a little bit more history and wait inside this temple and kind of stop here. Because I'm very, very wet and my, my jacket is also large. All sorts of um, recycled sheet products. So, I need a plate that's Oh well, we'll just hold it up like this. After the Roman Empire exited, what happened here? Well, the Vikings came in around 900 AD. Along with them though, also came in a bunch of missionaries, evangelists from the south. Because while the Roman civilization lasts, the Roman religion still was trying to conquer the world. See, now I would love to spread a theory that the Roman Empire is still alive today. And the head of the Roman Empire is still alive. All these people from Rome came up and tried to get rid of all of these beautiful pagan monuments and religions. And in the town of Linfair, there was a monastery that was built there, and there's a whole community of like monks and nuns that still hang out there. They hang out there for a while. And then at this time, Ian was also trying to like centralize all of the UK. So, um, William the Conqueror came in from Normandy in like 10, I don't know, 1066, came in and conquered the land, turned all of English into French. So like the high court and all of the Hutu, they all spoke French. So, oh, I think it's stopped raining. Okay, let's go outside and try to go outside. So you have all of England now speaking French. I have to walk over that. And we have Wells over here speaking Welsh still practicing probably some pagan practices with some of, obviously, the, uh, the religion from the other people, you know, still around and trying to, to get involved. Well, England wasn't having it, and they're like, Wells, you're part of us. And Wells didn't have that big of an army to come and fight back. I mean, they just got rid of the Romans, they just got rid of the Vikings, and they're just like, would you freaking leave us alone? We just want to live with our green fields and our beautiful mountains all in peace. So what happened is that England was just like, okay, Wells, you're ours. And Wells was like, fine, we're yours. Whatever, leave us alone. And this was around like 1200, 1280. England kind of forgot about Wells, which was awesome. Because what that let Wells do was build their own culture, build their own religion, build their, wait, ah! What that Wells, let Wells do was build their own culture, preserve the language, and just like enable them to be themselves. While well, England then worried about Ireland and about Scotland. So Ireland and Scotland eventually came, I guess it was Scotland and England, I don't know, they came to an agreement in the 1700s. And by then, Welsh was already still a language, which I think is pretty cool. And then whenever the UK unified, they made their own flag, right? 
and everyone knows the UK flag, the Union Jack, you know, the, the red crosses and the blue crosses and the white crosses and all that sort of stuff. Like you have the red cross from St. George, the patron saint of England. You have the uh, white cross on the blue background from St. Andrew, I'm pretty sure. It's the patron saint of um, Scotland. And then everyone knows St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland. Where's Wells on that? Well, Wells was already part of England and England kind of forgot about it to put it on the flag. So Wells has its own flag, you guys, and it's the coolest flag ever. It's a red dragon. How can you not like the red dragon? But where did the red dragon come from? You'll have to find out in our next episode, in our next stop, because the rain's coming down again and my camera's gonna get wet. Okay, guys, I finally have a pavement. I've been walking on this tiny little one lane road for a while. So now I have to take a break and tell you the finish telling you the story of the Red Dragon. So after Wells booted the Romans out and after the Romans left England, the Welsh people adopted the symbol of the Red Dragon as a symbol of strength. And I think that's cool. Now, I don't know if the dragon was around then or not, but it's lore and it's legend and the Red Dragon is here. So I really like it. Now, the reason I stopped here is A, to show you this beautiful scenery of just like everything that I've been walking down, except for the last 30 or 40 minutes, there's no, been no side. But look what's in front of us. So there's this really old, I guess old, it's probably Victorian built, since a bunch of stuff around here was built Victorian. But check this out, it's like an old Gothic church. Let's see if we can see in the door. Look at that. Ooh, is it, is it open? Let's see. Oh, guys, guys, the porch is up here though. We have a rainbow over the church. This is so cool. And in the courtyard, we have all sorts of gravestones. Let's go read some of them. Ooh, here's one. Miss Lydia Roberts. Born 1831, died 1906. Guys, this is so cool. Oh, we can see the rainbow in front of us again. So we can't go into the church because it looks like this porta is locked. But check how beautiful this is. Is it locked? Yeah, porta's locked. This is so cool. I need to make sure I don't step on any gravestones. So we have some raised gravestones here. Let's walk this way. Margaret Jones. This is really, really, this is so peaceful, you guys. So this church definitely is Victorian. Or what? Oh, wow. Rainbow. These people have, must have had so many stories. Like so many wars were in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Check this one out. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there the sign is. So the sign's down here. It's been like a little bit worn away. It's just beautiful in front of this beautiful church. Right now we have like the rain coming down and there's the most amazing sunlight, sunlight in the spring. Spring is when this video is recorded. I'm not sure when it'll post because I'm way behind in editing, but this is beautiful. And the rainbow is still up there, rainbow! Beautiful, you guys. Oh, this is awesome. Look at this door. We're gonna see if we can see inside. So you can see the barbed wire is gone and like look at these beautiful windows. So pretty you guys, maybe. Mm. After I've gotten electrocuted, I'm scared to touch these. But we're not gonna touch those. I don't want them to be electrocuted. They're probably okay, but we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna go around the corner.
Isn't it cool to see what happens when the porch is all beard though? Okay, so I have a very long walk back. I don't know where back is. Um, I have a long walk to where the grocery store is. Zoom. Aren't they pretty? This is also nice too, you guys. I have a little grassy to walk on. So I don't have to walk on that road like I was doing back there. I was grassy, I have shadow now. It's sunny. I'm so happy. And my hair is nice and it's still wet, but it's sunny. So I know it's gonna dry, which is great. And my shoes are almost dry. So then, ah, since my next destination is a grocery store, at least I won't go tracking in mud. Well, wet mud. Probably dry mud is all over me right now. Okay, so I have gotten out of the country road I was in, and now I have this massive highway where the speed limit's like fast miles per hour. But then look, you guys, it says historic route. It doesn't really go to the grocery store, and I'm not sure how I'll get there, but I don't know where else to go because I don't want to walk on the highway. Like, that's a very fast car. So we're gonna go up this historic route and see what's there. I don't know. It's an exploration. Okay, take a look at that house already. So cute. And over here, we have a nice old wall. I'd love to go wander in there, but it's a little bit muddy. And I left my walking stick back. It has a resting place because it was getting too heavy to carry and my hand got really muddy. So walking stick is resting. And this is really pretty. I hope you can hear the birds. birds. I don't know why this is historic still, but it's beautiful. I mean, look at this stuff. It's just so pretty, you guys. Oh, look. Well, balls. Okay, I guess they're not balls. Yeah, they're balls right there. See the balls? They're like little tiny white flowers. And then to the right of us, look at this. We have a little dancing sheep. Dance, baby sheep. Do it again. Do it again. I love these baby sheep, they're so animated. I really can't be sad about that. Check out that view and those mountains. Snowden is still a little bit covered. Very, very cool. Okay, so there's a question you should ask. Why don't more people go to Wells? Like why isn't it as big as London and that sort of stuff? because it's a secret and we don't want to share all of our secrets with the world. What is there to do in Wales? A lot of hiking. There's so many Neolithic archeological stuff here too. Like if you have a car, it makes it way easier to get to. If you're on your feet, then you just end up walking like possibly 40 kilometers just to see one. So we're not gonna go see any more of them because my feet hurt, but check it out. Like this is what you do in Wales, you guys. You enjoy living and you enjoy the baby sheep. I think baby sheep season is the best season in Wells, but you know, that's me. That was a way better walk than it was walking on the highway. And there's no pavement on the highway. So I'm really glad I did that. Like I saw a bunch of sheep. I hope some of the videos come out and if they don't come out, then I won't put them in. So just imagine a lot of baby sheep that are just like, Dancing. Whoa. I forgot I have to cross. Check this out. I found all these daffodils. Daffodil season. It's also allergy season, so you know. It's a great season to come and visit Wales. I think it anyway. So we're walking up to this little cute sign. I just think it's really cool that they they I guess it was like the tourism board or something. The tourism board decides to go and create something to try to attract people. And it worked. It does attract people. But I don't know if it worked as big as they were hoping it to be. I'd love to know like how much tourism they make from the sign. 
and from all the stickers and t-shirts and all of that sort of stuff they sell. So see, the village with the long name. Okay, now we're walking down the main street of Linfair, and it's so cute. We're gonna go down the other main street, so there's really only two streets here. Now, whenever the city planners were making the super long name for this town, I kind of wonder what they were up to. Like, what was the tourism attraction that they wanted to bring people here? Was it all the archeology span and like all the cool Neolithic stuff? Because if so, 100% agree. Love that idea. So this is the other little street of Linfair. And we see a cat in the wild. What's the cat after? Gato. Maybe Welsh cats speak Spanish. Hola, gato. Nope, cat is just having its own time. I love all of the brick walls here. So they're all like little pointy at the top. And all of these things, they're reminiscent of the, uh, the Neolithic stone circles. Now here there are still stone circles and like all sorts of burial places and that sort of stuff. And we didn't see them because I was already wet and muddy and I didn't have enough time or shoes or energy to go see everything. So you just get to see the best parts that I saw. Well, this is pretty. Oh, look, there's a nest up here, you guys. There's little birds going inside. That's uh, probably not gonna show up. Oh, well, there's a nest up there that you can't see that I can see. So this church was built Victorian ages. And we have nice little posts here. Do, 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 do. Across the street, we have a fun little playground. All sorts of people playing in it. So in this area, um, there's a bunch of houses here and it's probably stuff just to keep like the schools up and everything else up. And if you don't live on a farm, you probably live here. I think I'd want to live on the farm because those farms that we saw were pretty cool. So the other thing that I want to show you, I'm trying to get a better view without so here, there's a pointy, pointy, doo -doo -doo. There's a super tall tower and there's a bunch of them around here. Like I saw one in the, uh, the river. Yeah, I said that right. I saw one in the river when I was taking the train over here. And there's all of these massive statues of famous people, which is pretty cool. So that's basically what Land Fair is. It's this really cool, really chill town with a single grocery store maybe 1.5 churches. I know I saw one. Um, there's two schools that I've seen. A couple of bars, there's a hotel. Should you come see it? Yes, because there's so much to do around here. Like, yes, you can see the sign, but don't just get off the train to see the sign. You have to see what else is around here because it's insane. Like we saw Jurassic Park trees, avatar trees, whatever they were. We saw baby sheeps. Oh, we're getting blown away. We saw all sorts of flowers, all sorts of rain, all sorts of mud. Like, guys, this place is full of adventure, and I think that you need to come see it. So, stay tuned. I'll be somewhere else next week. I don't actually know where, because I kind of just stopped planning my life and just started to go with wherever I feel like it. So, yeah, see you next week. Ciao.